people of the earth, welcome. And also people not of the earth, welcome. Today in this video, we are going to be going through abelian groups, rings and fields, as this title nicely suggests. In the previous video, we went through finding inverses in modular arithmetic, and we talked about groups. This is the fifth video in this series of math prerequisites for cryptography and ZK proofs. So I recommend you go and watch those four other videos before you watch this one, because I'm going to be assuming some knowledge. But before I start rambling, let's get on with the video. So let's define these mathematical structures in abstract algebra so that when we see them written in context, we understand what they mean. Number one is an abelian group. This is also known as a commutative group. This is a group, so a set plus a binary operator that satisfies number one, closure. Number two, there exists an identity element. Number three, every element has an inverse. And number four, associativity. And we remember this with the acronym Cyphrin is incredibly awesome. An abelian group is a group, so this stuff above, plus the group operation is commutative. And commutative means the result of applying the group operation to two elements, let's call them A and B, does not depend on the order they are written. Mathematically, this means that A operated on with B is equal to B operated on with A. And this is the mathematical definition for commutivity. So an abelian group is just a commutative group, a group where the group operation is also commutative. Let's move on to the next algebraic structure. And remember, these are just ways to describe our sets plus our binary operators and how they behave. The second one is rings. A ring is a set equipped instead with two binary operators. And in the context of cryptography and ZK, usually this is addition and multiplication that satisfy the following properties. Firstly, under the first operator, which is usually addition, the set must form an abelian group, meaning that it must have closure, an identity element, every element must have an inverse, it must be associative, and as we just learned from abelian groups, it must also be commutative. Now under the second operator, which is usually multiplication, the set must satisfy just closure and associativity. Now the final property that this set plus two binary operators must satisfy is one that considers both addition and multiplication. And that is, it must be distributive. The multiplication must distribute over addition. And this is a bit like expanding brackets. And this is actually best described using mathematical definition. And there's two different types. So it needs to be left distributive and right distributive. So for A, B and C in the set, A multiplied by B plus C is equal to, and if we expand this bracket, A multiplied with B plus A multiplied with C, which we know is true as we know we can expand this bracket. Right distributive is the same, but the other way around. So we've got A plus B multiplied by C, which if we expand this bracket must be equal to a dot c plus b dot c. So note here that a ring does not necessarily have to have a multiplicative identity because that is not in this set of properties here. However, if it does, if there exists a multiplicative identity, it's often referred to as a ring with unity or a unital ring. So if you see these terms, it just means that it's a ring plus it has a multiplicative identity or the second operator has an identity. Additionally, multiplication in a ring is not required to be commutative. And if it is commutative, if multiplication is commutative, i a dot b equals b dot c, the ring is called a commutative ring. Now, finally, and possibly the most interesting one is a field. And again, a field is a set equipped with two binary operators, usually addition, multiplication, and it's actually a ring plus additional properties under multiplication or the second operator. So the properties that the field must satisfy, and again, we're gonna split this up by the first operator, which is usually addition, and the second operator, which is usually multiplication. So under addition, the set 
must form an abelian group again. So this is closure, has an identity element, every element has an inverse and it's associative, and it must be commutative. Under multiplication, it must also form an abelian group. So again, must have closure, there must exist an identity element, every element must have an inverse, must be associative, and it must be commutative. So for a set plus two binary operators to be a field, it must form an abelian group under the addition operator or the first operator and form an abelian group under multiplication or the second operator. Additionally, as with rings, it must also conform to the distributive laws. It must be left distributive. So A dot B plus C is equal to A dot B plus A dot C. And also it must be right distributive. So A plus B dot with C is equal to A dot C plus B dot C. So that was just a quick video to take you through the last couple of algebraic structures that you might see. And we defined them so that when we see these words, we know what that means and therefore what the set plus the operator or two binary operators must satisfy. And therefore we can make some assumptions about their behavior which is gonna become in useful shortly. So firstly, an abelian group, and this is a commutative group, so it's a group plus the operator must also be commutative. So the result of applying the operation to the two elements doesn't depend on the order they're written. We then defined a ring, which is a set equipped with two binary operators now, which is usually addition and multiplication. And under addition, it must form an abelian group. Under multiplication, all it needs is closure and associativity. And finally, it also must be left distributive and right distributive. If under multiplication, there exists an identity which is in the set, then the ring is a unital ring. If multiplication is also commutative for every element in the set, then it is called a commutative ring. And finally, we defined a field, which is again a set equipped with two binary operators. And under addition, it forms an abelian group. Under multiplication, it also forms an abelian group and it also has the distributive laws, meaning that a field is a ring plus these additional properties under multiplication. Because for a ring, for multiplication, all you needed was closure and associativity. For a field, we also need an identity element, an inverse element for every element, and we also need it to be commutative. And that was a whistle-stop tour on abelian groups, rings, and fields. I will see you in the next one where we are going to talk about cyclic groups.